Welcome to Home Practice. This session is called Finding Your Flow. Hi everyone, my name's Christian. You can refer to me as he or him. I am a tall, white, male standing dancer. I'm wearing a green t-shirt and I smile a lot. Today's session, Finding Your Flow, is split up into three parts. Part number one is called Improvising Your Seamlessness. We're going to work with visualization and improvisation to assist us in finding our flow. Part two, we're going to look at specific movement pathways that travel all throughout the body. And we're going to look at specific pathways in this part. Part three, our third and final part, we're going to look at a sequential shifting flow that combines all of our explorations in part one and part two. We're going to learn that all together. Let's begin. Find your space any space, find a comfortable upright position, feel your feet spreading into the floor and your sit bones into your chair. And if you're happy to do so, close your eyes. If this isn't so comfortable for you, find a soft gaze. I would like to present an image to you of a container. Now this container can be any shape, but also any size, and your container may be very different to the one I'm thinking of. Let's imagine this container filling with water. It fills the corners, travels through all the channels, moves constantly and continuously until it fills all the way to the top. Let's now transfer this image to our body. In stillness, let's imagine the water bubbling up from our bottom surface. It starts to fill the lower limbs, washes over the pelvis, washes the ribs, pours over the clavicle, down into the arms, and then all the way up to the top of the head. I would like us to take a second just to visualize the constant movement of the water in our bodies. I invite you now to blink open your eyes if they're closed and a moving image will appear on the screen. The image is of underwater light that creates a beautiful veil of sunlight coming from above. The water flows and continuously ripples. You may choose to close your eyes again or you can take your focus away from the screen. Let's remember the constant movement of the water in our bodies. Calmly, let's begin moving and see if we can create the same seamless flow. 
I like to think as if I am submerged in water. Even if I am not moving, I am being moved constantly and continuously. As you're moving, see if you are able to transfer the water and assist its flow around your body. Imagine the flow having no barriers and no edges. Your movement follows a path without redirecting. You create continuous, seamless curves. Imagine you are opening up channels in your body for movement. The channels in your arms, the channels of your ribs, the channels that circle your pelvis. And through this, you create a free flowing energy. You may decide where the flow takes you or go with your body. Either way, you may begin to shift in space. If you have your eyes closed, you may want to open them. You may wish to increase your speed or decrease your speed. The beauty of home practice is that you can follow your body and tune in. Our focus is finding our flow. For the next few minutes, I would like us to consider every move that we do as one single movement, a continuous, seamless curve.
gently. Let's bring our energy down. In your own time, there's no rush. Till eventually, you find your still place, reconnecting your feet with the floor, or your sit bones with your chair. Let's revisit those movement pathways throughout our body that we've just experienced, but this time in our mind's eye without moving. Picture all of the channels, the seamless flow, where the movement has taken you. Now, from your bottom surface, the water begins to drain out of your body, out of your head, up your arms, it reveals your clavicle, down through your center, reveals your pelvis, out of your lower limbs until your body is completely empty. Very nice, everyone. I would just like to say that I've posted a link in the description box below about the Gaga technique. Throughout lockdown, I've had the pleasure of doing many classes, and one of the teachers said about letting the energy swim in your body. And that really resonated with me, and it's something that I've been trying to put into my own practice, and is something that has influenced this part of our session. So if you're interested, please check it out. Definitely worth a watch. Let's move on to part two, which is our traveling, moving movement pathways throughout the body. I've posted a link in the description box below, and it shows a really incredibly talented dancer and artist called Poppin' John. He waves, he pops, and the movement that he does is extremely detailed, and it's extremely precise. But what I've taken from his work is how that when he's moving, he's incredibly detailed and he doesn't miss any part of his body. It's very much a full body experience when you watch him. So I've taken a lot of influence from his movement in this section. So please have a look and support him because it's really special. I'm gonna take you through four different pathways through the body and then we're going to put them all together. The first pathway that we're going to look at is from one side, traveling all the way through to the other side. Let's try. So you're finding a way that this energy can travel through this pathway. When you get to one side, you may wish to redirect or you may wish to reset completely. We're going to repeat this pathway many times. The most important thing for me is that you look at all of the details and you go at a speed that allows you to not miss anything out. I like to consider this energy 
like a fizz or a spark. I like to give mine a colour. Mine's blue today. And as I said, we're going to repeat many times. See how you can play with it. Maybe you do it very fast. Maybe it's really slow. Maybe it's really small. Follow your curiosity. You may find sticky points on the way. How can we move to accommodate them? I might want to turn in one side, but then to allow it to continue, I have to turn out. And to come through my chest, I might have to twist in my arm and send it forwards. So it's how you can change the movement to allow the movement to travel with as much detail as possible. Just a couple more tries of this pathway. And at the end of your next one, have a rest, have a shake. Next one, in the chest, your upper torso. Let's find the movement again. Your version doesn't look, have to look a thing like mine. You can experiment in whatever way you wish. You may also notice that the rest of my body is moving as well. Even though we are focusing on a very specific pathway, try not to let the rest of the body get stale. So we keep everything alive as much as we can. I like to consider this movement like I'm unlocking gates in my body. So I can unlock a gate in my sternum for my chest to come forwards. The gate in my ribs opens, the gate in the back of my ribs opens, and the gates in the side of my other ribs open. And it allows the movement to travel, and it also helps me find a sequence. Maybe find your diagonal space, play with size, it could be very small or very big, or very quick, or really slow. Last few seconds of this pathway. And let's come to a rest. Have another little shake if you need. The next pathway, from your head, traveling down to the lowest part of your mobile spine. Let's start in the head. Find the flow first. Then from here, how can we move it to travel down through the spine to the lowest part of our mobile spine, keeping the energy flowing here, and then sending it all the way back up to the head. Secret here is when it gets to its temporary destination, how can we keep the energy going <sighs> to change it, to move it, to keep it fluid? This one's quite snaky. Really include all parts as much as you can. Maintain the detail. Maybe you can find a different journey down. And then a different journey up. Find what interests you. 
Last couple of journeys. Good, everyone, very nice. And rest. Have another little shake. Our last pathway, from the lowest part of your mobile body, all the way up to the end of your extremities. Let's start close to our bottom surface, all the way around. Up through to the arms. From here, how does it then travel all the way down to the lowest mobile part? And then all the way up. <sighs> On the way down, can it go into both sides? On the way up, <sighs> can it come into both sides? Does it come down one side, <sighs> go out of the other? Can you transfer it to the other side? All the way up to the top. Keep your detail as much as you can. If you need to decrease your speed, go for it. This is your time to explore. Again, play with your size. Can it be super big? Super slow motion. Last couple of journeys, guys. At the end of this next one. Find your rest. Have a little shake. Next, we're gonna put them all together. Okay, everyone. Let's put those four movement pathways together into a short sequence. Start with one side any side. From your extremities, it travels all the way in to your shoulder and out again. Let's repeat just that twice more. Shoulder brings it in, sends it out. One more time. Next time, we move on. Here, in, goes out, comes back in through the chest and out the other side. Two more times. Here we go. In, very nice, everyone. One more time. I'm going to do it small this time. This next time, we add on the next bit. In, send it out. Bring it in, through the chest, out the other side, send it back in to find it in the chest. Nice. That whole thing twice more. Shoulder out. Through and out the other side. Back through in to the chest. Again. As you can see, everyone, I'm varying how I do it every single time. Don't feel like you have to do it the same. 
you can change it as much as you want. The next time, we're gonna add on. Boom. Send it up to the tip of your head, down to the last part of your mobile spine, all the way back up again. Again, twice. Here we go. We'll do a slow-mo version this time. Through. Keep your whole body alive. Up to the head. Down to the lowest part of the mobile spine. Comes all the way up again. To the head. Again, go. Here we go. I'm transferring my weight between my feet all the time. Maybe you can find a similar thing with your sit bones in your chair. Up to the head, down to the lowest part of your mobile spine, all the way up again to the tip of the head. The next time, we add on our last part. I'm gonna go a tiny bit quicker this time. It goes down. The lowest mobile part. It goes all the way up and out of your extremities. That's everything. We're gonna do it three times. Here we go. Twice more. I'm going to do mine very small this time. Our last time. The detail is super important. Try and catch every single part of your body when we do it. This last time, here we go. Nice, everyone. Very nice, everyone. Have a drink and move on to part three. Welcome to part three, the third and final part of our session. This is the shifting sequential flow. We're going to use everything that we've experienced in part one and part two. We're gonna bring it all together and we're gonna learn a sequence. But before we do that, I would like us to spend a little bit of time exploring how we can use the pathways in part two to inspire movement and many of your own pathways as well. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples to get you started. If I'm thinking about the pathway in my chest, for example, if I find a circle, I'm noticing where the space is. So I've created space on this side and it allows me to shift. If I'm using the pathway in my extremities, I may come round. I've made space here. If it then comes through, I've made space in the front part and I can shift. So when you're using these pathways, the main thing for me is that you work out where your space is and how you can use the pathway to inform your shift in space. If you're in your chair, you may wish to take your hands to your wheels 
to allow for greater ease of shifting. That's entirely up to you. Let's take the next couple of minutes just to explore for ourselves any pathways. Let's go. You don't just have to think about the pathways that we worked on together in the last section. Find your own pathways. How they can create shift. How you find the sequence through your body. There's no right or wrong. Following your curiosity. And gently winding down your movements, making your pathways smaller until you find a still place. Nice work, everyone. Next, let's learn our sequence. When I teach you, I'm not going to mention left or right. My advice is that you learn the sequence as you see it. I'm going to give a lot of description so that if a certain movement doesn't quite fit your body, then you can feel free to adapt in whatever way you wish. Hopefully, my description will give you enough to inform the quality of the action. Let's start. Gonna find a rolling in one shoulder. The other shoulder rolls and you take your ribs across in space. Two more times. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs across. Last time. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs across. Excellent. Next time. We add on. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs go across. The space you've made here allows you to twist 180 to face the opposite direction. Again. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs, and shift. The next time we add on. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs, and shift. The energy stays around this area. Use the lowest part of your mobile spine to send the energy all the way up, reaching over as far as you can to come back to the way you began facing. Let's do again, a couple of times. Shoulder, shoulder, round the corner, lowest part of your mobile spine, going all the way up to reach 
and facing. Excellent, everyone. One more time, we add on. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs, round, lowest part of your mobile spine, rippling up, reaching over to find a circle in the chest. A quick note about my base. I move it in order to help me find the flow of the sequence. So this part doesn't have to be so set. We're just following the same flow together through the sequence. Hopefully that helps you. Let's do again, adding on. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs round, last part of your mobile spine rippling all the way up, reaching over here. Find your chest, make space to find a quarter turn, shift and send your face forwards. Again, shoulder, shoulder, ribs, round, lowest part of the mobile spine, rippling up, reaching over to find your chest, change your space, send your face. One more time, we add on. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs, round the corner, mobile spine, rippling up, reaching over to find your chest, change your space, send your face, ripple all the way up, pressing through your base, move your spine, face goes forwards again. Two times. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs, going round, mobile spine, rippling up, reaching over, send your chest, change your space, send your face forwards. I press quite a lot through my feet here. This may be a similar action in your sit bones if you're seated. Next time, we add on. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs around the corner, rippling up through the spine, reaching over, send your chest, change your space, send your face, reaching forward. You pull your face forward, bring your backside in, up and over with the chest, and if it's available, the knee as well. Two times this. Here we go. Shoulder, shoulder, ribs, round, mobile spine, rippling up, reaching over, Send your chest, change your space, send your face forwards, suck in over the top. I just twist my torso on top. Excellent. One more time, adding on, we're nearly there. Shoulder, shoulder, round the corner, mobile spine to stretch, chest, change your space. Send your face forwards, suck in, over the top, and down. Last time, adding on. Shoulder, shoulder, round the corner, ripple, reach, chest, change your space, face forwards, in, over the top. Last bit. Find your hug. Other side takes over expansion in the chest. Bring them together, rolling down, rolling up. This is your loop. It begins again. Because that move is a tiny bit more complicated, we're going to do it two times, just that. You come round to here. The arm goes. Send the other arm through, diving down, rolling up to loop. One last time this, then we do the whole thing. Find the space, reaching through, opening, expanding, diving down, rolling up to loop. Everyone, that is our whole sequence. We're gonna do it once, all the way through, 
from the beginning. Let's do it. Shoulder, shoulder, round the corner, rolling up through the spine, reaching, sending the chest, change your space, send your face, send your face forwards, suck in, over the top, twist your spine, hug the space, reach open, through and dive, rolling up to loop. Everyone, that is our whole sequence. Take a second, rewind if you need. The next thing we'll do is we'll try it with some music. Now that we've learned the sequence, to begin with, we're going to do the sequence once, looping it in to do a second time. Let's try. And round the corner, rippling, reaching, chest, change of space, face, thoughts in, over, reaching, reaching, diving down, rolling up. This is your loop, guys. Straight away. Reaching, chest, send your face, in with this side, over the top, hugging the space, reaching the space, diving down, rolling up, and rest. Small tip I would like to share with you is something that really helps me when I'm doing these kind of sequences. I feel that they're very different to sequences that require you to hit many shapes. So hopefully this could help you. I like to commentate what I'm doing as I'm doing it inside my head. I'll give you a short example of this. I send my shoulder, my other one is already coming, my ribs are ready to come round the corner to change my weight. The lowest part of my mobile spine is already circling to come up, the reaching has already begun. I'm already thinking about my chest as it comes through. I like to use this to help me to keep the flow of the sequence so that I don't stop the movement, instead the other things are already starting to happen as the previous move is happening. It really helps me, I really hope it could help you, fingers crossed. The last thing we are going to do in our session today, we are going to do four rounds of the sequence. And each time you do it, I would like you to change something about the way in which you do it. For example, I may choose to do it very small one time. I may choose to do it really big the next time. I might choose to do it very slow. I might choose to do it very fast. Any and all of the above, you can do whatever you want with the sequence, as long as we work on keeping our flow together. Last thing for this session, four times of the sequence, let's do it. It's my second round. Third round.
my final round. When you've finished your final round, come to resting place, have a little shake out if you need, and take some water. Thank you so, so much everyone for joining me on this session. If you really enjoyed it, please leave a like, even subscribe to the channel. Definitely leave a comment below letting us know what you think. We're always striving to improve our sessions, so anything you can tell us would be amazing. I would just like to say that I have linked another class in the description below, Amy Butler's Learning Material and Mapping Movement. It's a really great way of learning different ways to learn material. As you saw at the end of this session, I use an accumulative approach to teach some of the sequences. In Amy's session, you will learn so much more about this and many other different ways of doing that. So definitely check that out. I've done it myself. It's brilliant. I hope you enjoy it as well. Lastly, thank you so much again, and I hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone.